World Rowing uh, wanted to establish a connection with uh, a non-governmental organization working in the environmental field. And uh, we're very interested in the, the well-being of the water. So um, we were lucky to come on to WWF uh, and we found that uh, actually the beginning of their work was uh, focused on fresh water and conservation of water. Well, for us, from the beginning, there was a, a really strong connection. It was really obvious that um, that, that rowers are, are, are very simply connected with the water. We could see straight away that world rowing were very serious about uh, in their approach to, to making the sport of rowing more sustainable and thinking about um, freshwater conservation. So it was, a, it was a, a very easy partnership decision for us and, and, and huge opportunities to sort of reach uh, new audiences. It was a totally new idea for WWF to associate themselves with a sport. Rowing a sport which needs quality water, reasonable quality of water to take place. And uh, then we talked about the types of people who row, the core values of, of rowers and of the sport. And I think that's where it led to really some strong connections. I mean, I think what both WWF and, and World Rowing are trying to do here is, is start to, to change people's thinking and change people's behaviour um, uh, in, in response to, to the natural environment that's so important to rowing. And, and the, the first part of that is to, is to reach out to, to rowers themselves because they're, they're great ambassadors. And I think once we have their attention, and, and we, we really do, we have some, some fantastic athletes who are, who are speaking out on these issues for us. Rowing is a sport that we find uh, at a lot of schools and universities. It's a perfect sport for adolescents to build teamwork, to build discipline. It's an aerobic sport, it's a very healthy sport, but it brings the athletes together in a way that no other team sport does. So that's why we find uh, the sport of rowing all over the world really taking place at universities and at schools. This has led to a group of very well-educated, influential, uh, motivated people who, have, who are former rowers as well, out in the world of science, in industry, in business, in politics, um, and it's, it's, it's a great group uh, to draw from. Um, some of them, of course, have studied science and are into the, the business, the uh, industry of, uh, of water research, of uh, working on water projects, and they are excellent possible ambassadors for us also to explain and to bring together these uh, these two areas that we're working on. Many of them have come forward wanting to talk about it, blog about it, be spokespersons, because they feel it like we did as athletes, uh, and it's worked really nicely uh, to connect ourselves. I mean, as Matt mentioned, I think there's been some sort of specialist technical advice looking at water quality and water stewardship issues around particular venues and events, but also we've helped um, with some more general guidance on, on making events more sustainable and coming up with a sort of a simple, um, uh, you know, sort of one page, a few step process for, for teams and athletes so they can make sure that when they come to a rowing event, they're not, they're not um, accidentally doing anything that's, that's harming the, the natural environment. The global nature of the of the partnership is is tremendously valuable. Rowing happens all over the world. WWF has offices all, all over the world. So it's it's a great channel to um, to use the excitement of sport and the passion of rowing to uh, connect people with uh, with environmental issues and and with supporting clean water.